In this question, a scientist wants to determine the enthalpy change for the following reaction involving fictional elements with the symbols E and R. So this is the reaction that we're trying to find the enthalpy change for. Now we've been provided with the enthalpy of reaction for two different reactions with the following equations. So we can see these reactions aren't quite the same as the reaction we're trying to find the enthalpy change for. But if we combine these together in the right way, we can get the reaction that is our goal. So what we're going to be doing is figuring out how many moles and in which direction do we need each of the reactions provided in the table in order to make the overall reaction that we have at the top of the page. Then we're going to be combining those together with Hess's law to find the enthalpy change of reaction. Okay, so let's start by figuring out the direction required for each of our reactions. So let's start by identifying our products and reactants in our equations. So reactants that is the E2 R2. For products we have E and R. We've got two of each of those in our original equation. So let's identify where the reactants show up in our two reactions down here. So our reactants are, it's just E2R2. So the only place I see that is here in reaction two. So since that needs to be in the reactants and in reaction two there, it's already in the reactants, that's telling me we want this equation to be forwards because we already have that on the left-hand side and it needs to be on the left-hand side. So we want to have this in the forwards direction. So our reaction is going to stay the same for this one. What about our products? So our products are E and R. So let's look for those in our two reactions shown on the table. Here's E and R. That's the only place where our products appear in our reactions. And we need those to be in the products. Right now, they're on the left-hand side of the reaction one equation. They're in the reactants. We need them in the products. So we're going to need to have the reaction one equation backwards so that we end up with E and R in the products at the end. So I'm going to write that out the other way around. We're going to start with the products, which is E, R. And we're going to go to form the reactants, E and R. So I'm going to fill in here. We needed the backwards direction for reaction one and we needed the forwards direction for reaction two. And all we needed to do to figure that out is look at our reactants and products and make sure that our reactants are on the left hand side and our products are on the right hand side. So we can see here we've got one E2R2 now on our reactant side and we've got one E and one R on our product side. Now we need to figure out if we need to have just one mole of these reactions, if we need half a mole, if we need two, three, four moles of the reactions in order to make our goal reaction up here. So let's have a look at our goal reaction. We have one E2R2 in our goal reaction in the reactants and we have one E2R2 in our reaction down here. So that looks like we have the correct number already. We just need one set of that. So I'm going to write multiply by one next to that equation. For E and R, we have two E's in the products and two R's in the products for our goal equation. Now, if we look over here at our reaction, we only have one E and one R in the products of our reaction here. We need two of them. So we're gonna to have to multiply that whole equation by two in order to get two E's and two R's. We can go ahead and fill in that over here now. And then let's go ahead and calculate this out and add this up to show that it gets us our goal reaction. So we have on the left hand side, we've got two sets 
of Er, which is a liquid, and we have one set of E2R2, which is a solid. In the products on the right hand side, we have two sets of E and two sets of R. And we also have two ER from the lower equation. So this is looking good now because we have one E2R2 in the reactants as we need in the goal equation. We have two E and two R in the products as we need in the goal equation. But we also have some extra stuff. Over here we have two ER liquid. Over here we also have two ER liquid. So that can be cancelled out because it appears on both sides. And when we cancel that, our equation that we're left with is our goal equation. So we've successfully figured out that we need two moles of reaction one backwards and one mole of reaction two forwards in order to combine them together to reach our goal equation. Okay, so our next step, now that we've figured that out, is to find the enthalpy change of reaction. So to do that, we're going to be using Hess's law. Let's head to the reference sheet. Here's Hess's law. The overall enthalpy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy of reaction of the steps. So what that means is sum means we're adding up the enthalpy of reaction of our steps in our reaction. So for reaction one, here's our enthalpy of reaction. It's negative 412, but we have two moles of it and we have it backwards. Because it's backwards, that means it's going to be negative. And because we have two moles of it, we're going to need to multiply it by two. So we're going to have negative two times negative 412. That's going to get us our enthalpy change for that step of the reaction when we've got two moles of it and when it's backwards. We're going to add the second step. For the second step, our enthalpy change of reaction was negative 291. This time we need one mole of it and it needs to be forwards. So since it's forwards, we don't need to find the negative of it. So we can just add it and we just need one of it. One times two, negative 291. So that's each of our steps. So we can go ahead and add those up in our calculator. That's going to get us an answer of 533 kilojoules per mole. Awesome. Lastly, was this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Since we have a positive number, that means we're absorbing energy, which means overall the reaction was endothermic. So in this type of question, our first step is to identify our reactants and products in our goal equation. Then we're going to use that to identify where those reactants and products are in the reactions provided in the table. And we're going to use that to choose if we need the forwards or backwards directions, knowing that we need our reactants to be on the left and our products to be on the right eventually. Finally, we're going to take each of those reactions and figure out if we need to multiply them by anything so that we have the right number of our product and reactants, the same as in our goal equation. Then we'll add those equations together and that will get us to our goal equation. Next, we calculate our enthalpy change of reaction by adding up the enthalpy change of reaction for each of the steps. Remember, if it's backwards, we need to multiply it by negative one so that we have the enthalpy change for the opposite reaction. And if we have a certain number of moles, we need to multiply the enthalpy of reaction by that number of moles and add them together to get our overall enthalpy change of reaction.